Hi everybody, welcome back. Um, we're going to look at flexibility this week. Uh, we were going to do it last week because balance and flexibility sort of go together, but uh, Lindsay decided that it would be much better and easier if we separated it into two sessions. So we did balance last week and this week we're going to look at flexibility. I think flexibility is an interesting one. Um, I don't have the range of movement that I would like to have and I can definitely feel that aging has made, um, you know, that process of aging definitely has impacted on, uh, on, on the degree to which I am bendy, let's put it that way. Um, however, it's incredibly important to maintain and improve with flexibility as much as possible just for everyday tasks. I often think that, um, you know, simple things like being able to put uh, uh, your trousers on and things like that, you know, you have to bend down and, and there's a balance uh, aspect to that as well. Put one leg into one side of your trousers and then, you know, manage to put the leg in the other, other side. And if you can do that standing up, which I can just about manage to do, um, it's, uh, you know, it's so much easier. So it's about reaching, bending, stretching and doing all those things that you, um, that you want to be able to do to continue with your normal life. So uh, over to you, Lindsay, really, to set the scene for what we're going to be doing here. Thank you very much. Hi, everybody. Hope you're all well. Uh, so flexibility, um, what is flexibility? I suppose you'd kind of say, well, you know, it's when I feel a bit stiff um, and you'd absolutely be right. Uh, the technical definition is the range of motion around a joint. Now, obviously, the range of motion can get limited and that's for two main reasons. The first is because the muscles around that joint get tight. So if you imagine um, a sausage and a sausage has got a covering around it, um, that, that sort of outer um, membrane bit that goes around the sausage and that holds the content together inside. Well, our muscles have got a similar um, tissue, it's called fascia, that binds um, sections of the muscle together. And if that outer coating gets tight, then the whole muscle stiffens up and it loses its elasticity and its stretch. So um, what we need to do in that case is to stretch the muscle and lengthen it out and ease that fascia out again. And actually massage does a very, very similar thing. So we're easing the fascia to lengthen the muscle and to get much looser and much more flexible. Therefore, the joint is going to move through a bigger range of motion. And, and the second thing that impacts on the joints is actually the, the joint function itself. So it, um, if it doesn't get used, so there's certain joints that we use all the time, for example, the elbow, there's certain joints that we don't use very much at all, for example, the shoulder. And so lots of people will say to me, my shoulders are really, really tight um, or my hips really, really tight. And that's because those joints don't get mobilized and moved around and used that often. So there's kind of two, two parts really to flexibility, I would say. Um, and one we can help with stretching and one we can help with mobilizing and moving, moving the joints. So we're going to do a bit of both of that today. Uh, I should also say that with regard to stretching, there's different types of stretching. You might read about different types of stretching that you can do. And without going into the detail of it all, um, two main areas really that I'll just mention. One is whether you do a stretch completely still or whether you add some movement to it. So a small bounce or something like that. Um, so that is static stretching versus ballistic stretching. And the other, um, the other thing to talk about with regard to stretching is what you actually want to achieve out of your stretch. So if you just want to maintain your flexibility or maybe you want to just lengthen out your muscles after a workout, um, then that's one type of stretching. But if you actually want to develop your, your flexibility and improve it, then that's known as developmental stretching. For the first type, you only need to hold a stretch for about 10 to 15 seconds. In order to develop your flexibility, you need to hold it for longer. So in the region of 20 to 30 seconds per stretch to get that improvement that you're looking for. So um, in a session like this, I'd like to focus on developing flexibility. Um, don't time us on every single stretch that we do today because we probably won't do every single one for 30 minutes, but when you, sorry, 30 seconds, but when you're doing it at home, then think about how long you're holding the stretches. And we'll talk about breathing and how you can extend and develop the stretch within that 30 seconds. 
Okay. So what I would like to start with actually is not stretching at all. And that is breathing because it's such an important component of um, strength, um, sorry, stretching and flexibility. So in order to illustrate breathing or uh, correct breathing or the kind of breathing that we're looking for, I want to use a scarf. So if you can get a scarf, Tricia, and can you wrap it around your back? So um, just similar area to where your bra strap is and then bring the ends towards the front and cross them over and hold them one in each hand. So I want the scarf to be just underneath your bust and um, I want it to be sort of, I, I don't mean tight, but I want it to be snug to the body, that's it. And just hold your palms up to the ceiling so you're holding it nice and loose. Now, when we breathe normally, we tend to breathe in a very shallow kind of a way, and it tends to come from the chest and the um, shoulder area, and that can add to the tension in that area. So what we want to think about is breathing lower down. You'll often hear me talk about full and wide, um, and that's trying to get you to think about breathing into your rib cage such that they expand out to the side. Um, people also talk about front and back breathing. So you can breathe such that your tummy expands and even think about breathing towards the back. So the back of your ribs expand as well. Because don't forget that whole rib and diaphragm area. Um, it, there's muscles there too. And if we don't use them, then actually that can impact on your breathing and the whole circulatory system that we talked about a few weeks ago. So Using this scarf is a really nice way to practice that lateral and front to back breathing. So if I ask you to take a breath in, Tricia, I want you to think about breathing in through your nose, nice and deep. And as you do that, almost feel the tension on your scarf such that your ribs are expanding so wide, you almost have to let the scarf go a bit looser in order to um, accommodate the ribs moving. And then on the out breath, I want you to breathe out through your nose and feel the wrap around of your ribs and feel that the scarf almost wants to close up again as you breathe. Can you feel that, Tricia? Yes, I was just uh, practicing it. It's hard to <laughs> breathing in and out. So it's in through the nose, out through the mouth. In through the nose, out through the mouth. As you take the breath in through the nose, you want to think about the side of your ribs and your stomach and, and also breathing into the back of your ribs. So that whole midsection expands out as you take the air in. And so in an ideal world, you want it expanding out so much that you have to let the scarf go looser in order to accommodate that expansion around the rib cage. And then as you breathe out through your mouth, you close it all down again and you feel the scarf closing up. Can you get a sense of that happening? Yes. So this takes practice. It's not uh, a natural way that we breathe, um, but it's, the most effective way of breathing. It's very, very good when you do the stretching that we're about to do. And it's also really, really good from an anxiety and a calming point of view as well. So if you find yourself a little bit, you know, stressed up tight or, or just generally anxious, and that's very normal at the moment, isn't it? Just a few deep breaths like this is really, really useful to calming that stress down and to bringing your heart rate back down to a normal level. Um, the other image that I'll sometimes use is imagine you've got a glass, so you've got a tumbler and the bottom of the glass is in your pelvic area, um, going right through to the top of the glass, which comes up towards your, your ribs and beyond. So as you take the breath in, you're thinking about filling the glass from the bottom by your pelvis. So you're filling it right up with air. And as you breathe out again, you empty the glass right down to the bottom with air. I think so it's moving the abdominal wall out when you're breathing. I find that um, 
if I'm doing some kind of meditation, I'm doing some sort of relaxing breathing at the beginning of it, it's quite a useful thing to think of, you know, pushing your stomach out. And, you, you, you know, it's not that difficult to do, actually, but it, you really bring the breath, the breath right down. Mm, absolutely takes practice as I say it's not the way that we would breathe under normal circumstances and the, the more stress we get the more we tend to breathe from up here from the chest um, and, and the shoulders and if you actually look at yourself in the mirror when you're breathing if you ask somebody to take a breath I'll often see that happening so it's all upper body where actually what we want is for the shoulders to be relaxed and the breath to come from much further down so around the rib cage into the stomach and that kind of area good okay so I'd like to apply that as we go through the stretches um, and it will really help ease you into the stretches and get extra flexibility as we go through now, um, in terms of areas to focus on, I was looking back at some of the comments that people made when we did our first session with regard to what they want to work on. So rather than um, go through every single area of the body and stretch, what I'm going to do is focus on the areas that people have identified as being the most troublesome for them. So we'll do the neck and we'll do the shoulders. Um, we're going to do the hip flexor, so where the, um, the muscle that crosses the hip joint. We'll also do the front of the thigh, the quadricep. Um, because we've done that, we'll just balance it out with a hamstring stretch, so the back of the thigh. And then I want to do uh, back stretches because I know a lot of people have talked about back pain, whether it be lower back or mid back um, or even upper back. We'll do a section at the end on, on backs. So. Our first section then is neck and shoulders. And as I said, I'm gonna combine mobility and stretching. Even more important because we've not done any kind of exercise session. So we're coming at this from cold, if you like. And if you're doing this at home on your own, you want to make sure that you take it very, very gently. It is useful to stretch when you've done some sort of activity, when the body's a bit warmer. That's not to say that you shouldn't do it um, from cold, but you just need to take it very, very slowly. Um, the other thing that I should say is that you've got any injuries, back injuries, disc injuries, those sorts of things, please do check with the kind of work that you should be doing. Don't just launch into doing this session because you could do more harm than you really need to. So let's start on the neck then, Tricia. So I want you to take a big breath like we've just uh, talked about. So full and wide into the rib cage, in through the nose. On the out breath, I want you to just gently let your chin go down towards your chest. That's it. So just let the weight of the head take it down. Then from here, I just want you to roll the chin around from one side. So you're looking down on the diagonal, one side to the other. Just nice, gentle rolls, not too fast. You don't have to get dizzy and keep that breath going as you do it. So this should feel really nice in the back of the neck. Good. Perfect. Good, so if you come back to the start then, so chin's parallel with the floor, you're gonna take a breath in on the out breath, you're going to look to one side. So don't force it. Good, back to the center and then the other side. So it'll be out breath as you go to the side, in breath as you come back to the center and out breath to the other side. Good. So a few more of these. So this is just mobilizing the joints in the neck, back to the center. It's sort of movement, it's noticeable when you're in the car and you're uh, reversing. Yes. Yeah, and if you've uh, you know slept funny or you've got a stiff neck, then um, it makes such a difference because you can't look over your shoulder when you're in the car. That's it, perfect. And then come back to the center. So let's go back to that um, breathing in and then breathing out to nod the chin. And this time we're gonna leave it down there a little bit longer. So breath in and breath out. So it's the weight of the head, just making that stretch happen. Where can you feel the stretch? Uh, down my spine, the upper part of my spine. Yeah, and the back of your neck. Mm -hmm. 
so don't forget that it's it's all connected so if you are particularly tight through your neck and your upper back don't be surprised if you feel it go down into your back and not just your neck that's completely normal and then let's just give that a little break Trisha and we'll go one more time so full and wide breath and then out breath to drop the chin to the chest and just hold it there perfect and then come back to the top so that was the back of the neck um, if you feel the need to repeat this more than a couple of times that's absolutely fine if that's a particularly stiff area for you then do a few more and make this work for you um, the next one we're going to have a look at is the side of the neck so you're going to take a breath in you're going to make sure that the shoulders stay down out breath you're going to send your ear towards your shoulder so has the stretch moved? Uh, yeah, so the stretch is now very definitely down the side of my neck. Yeah, perfect. So that's what I'm aiming for. I'm aiming for that muscle that goes down from the ear um, down through to the top of the shoulder. So you're just going to let the weight of the head just hold it there and enjoy that stretch. And come back to the centre. Take a breath in. And then other side the same thing just let it hold there everything should be relaxed now if you were to bring that opposite shoulder up with you towards your ear you would take the stretch off so you need to keep pushing that opposite shoulder down and away towards the back to keep the stretch on the side of the neck lovely come back up to the top we're going to do one more time each side breathing in Breathing out, ear towards the shoulder without allowing the opposite shoulder to lift. And then back to the center, breathing in and breathing out last time, ear to shoulder. Good, okay. Okay, so we're gonna go on to the shoulder area next. So I want to combine neck and shoulder um, with this next exercise. So it's, it's an extension of what we've just done. So if you take a breath and then ear goes to shoulder again, and then you're gonna take your opposite hand, so your left hand, flex it, and then push that arm away on the diagonal. That's it, it doesn't need to go too high, a little bit lower, I would say. There, yeah. Uh, now, can you, can you feel how that stretch is extended, particularly if you push through the heel of your hand? Yeah. So it should have taken it beyond the side of the neck and out towards the edge of your shoulder. Yeah. Perfect. It's quite hard. Hard? Quite hard. As in it feels, it, it feels quite tight. Yeah. 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 very unnatural like it doesn't want to do that yeah yeah but don't forget you've also got lots of nerves that run all the way down through to the end of your fingertips as well so some of these the the nerve will be quite tight too so they can get a little bit little bit nervy sometimes so as long as it's mild discomfort that's absolutely fine i don't want any more than that let's do the same thing the other side so you're breathing in ear goes towards the shoulder flex the hand on the other side Keep the shoulder down and push the hand away, pushing down through the heel of the hand. Can you feel that one side is tighter than the other or do they feel okay? I think it's probably the left is more tight than this one. I'm right-handed, so. Hmm. Yeah. Good, lovely, perfect. All right, so let's, um, let's just release the shoulders and mobilize them a bit before we stretch them out. So can you circle them around for me, please? So a standard shoulder circle, but take it through its full range. So you're taking it up to your ears, all the way around to the back, all the way down, and then through the front. Good. Lovely. And then come the other way. So even just this mobilization should feel quite nice into the shoulders.
good, perfect. And then shrug them up. So in breath to shrug, out breath to let them go. In breath to shrug, out breath to let them go. Two more. Perfect, good. Give them a swing through then, front to back. Good, lovely. Okay, so let's do one stretch for the front of the shoulder and one stretch for the back of the shoulder. Starting with the front of the shoulder, you're going to turn your palms to the back of your body, standing nice and tall in your normal position and push your hands away as far as they'll go to the back. So long straight arm, push your shoulders away from your ears and then both hands together to the back. That's it. And you take them to the point at which you can feel a stretch across the front of your shoulder. Can you feel that? Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to just turn on the side then people can see the kind of angle that you're at? That's it, push them away. So you push your shoulders down and then you push them away to the back until the point that you're getting the stretch that's right for you on the front of your shoulder. Make sure that you're not, uh, which you're fine at the moment, Tricia, but um, just make sure that you're not leaning back into the stretch um, and that you're not kind of curving too much into the lower back. So you want a normal, natural posture, your body, yeah, exactly. Your body doesn't move, um, but you're standing nice and tall and pushing away to the back. And that should feel very nice in the front of your shoulders. Good, and release that one off. Let's do the back of the shoulders now. So we're gonna give ourselves a great big hug. So you're going to literally put, cross your arms at the front so you can face forward now. Yep, and give yourself a big hug. So your hands go around the back to the back of your shoulder blades, that's it. Then I want you to walk your fingers closer together and think about separating your, separating your shoulder blades. So you're opening up across the back of the shoulder, slightly rounding through the back and feel your shoulder blades separate and give you a nice stretch across the back of the shoulders. Can you feel that? Yeah. Perfect. And if you want, you can slightly move from side to side to so slightly rock from side to side. It just gives you a little bit extra through the back of the shoulders. That's it, perfect, good job. Okay, just release those off. How do your shoulders feel? Yeah, good, Lisa. Good. Um, I'm gonna do one more for that area. So if you put your hands behind your head, you're gonna take a breath in as you bring your elbows together at the front, slightly round through your back. So bring your elbows together, chin can go towards the chest and slightly round through the back. And then out breath, push your elbows away. That's it, good. And feel the stretch across the front. And then go again, breathing in, elbows together, chin on the chest, and breathing out, push the elbows away towards the back. Good, two more, nice big breath in. And breathing out, push them away. Good, one more, breathing in. And out to push them away. Good, and release. Perfect. All right, so neck, shoulders are done. We'll now move on to our front of the thigh and our quadricep muscle, so hip flexor and quadricep. So we're gonna do this first option in a lunge position. Uh, we'll show an alternative in a minute for people that don't feel able to do the lunge position. So probably best side on for this, Trisha. So have your feet front and back like you would in a, in a normal lunge, back heels off. So you're going to bend through both knees. You don't have to go down very low, just a little bend yet. Yeah. Now there, I want you to tuck your bottom under tuck your bottom, so it's a small movement, just a little tiny tuck of the bottom. It's hard to see on camera. Um, so you're just tucking under. And as you've tucked under, you should feel a stretch go on through the front of the thigh. So cross your hip, can you feel that? Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, exactly. A bit hard to see when, you, when you're in black, it's a bit hard to see one leg from the other. Good. That's it. And then we'll swap to the other side. So you don't have to drop very low. Then a tuck under. So it's a little tiny tuck under of the bottom. And as you tuck under, that's when you feel the stretch go, go on. Now, if you're quite stable and you want a bit extra, you can take the arm that's on the same side as the leg that's stretching and you can reach it up to the ceiling. In breath and out breath slightly over to the side, over your head. So if you just lift out of your hip with your hand, you'll feel that stretch extend through the front of the thigh. Good, lovely, perfect and relax. Good, okay. How did that feel? Yeah, stretchy. And could you feel how subtle the movement was? So it's just that little tuck under of the bottom. Yes, it just pulls the... It, yeah, so if you don't tuck your bottom under, tuck your pelvis under, then you won't feel the stretch at all. Well, you might feel it a bit in the main bit of the thigh, but you won't feel it in that bit that crosses the hip. Um, obviously we're sitting down all day so that muscle gets really short um, and it can start to pull on the back and alter the posture so it's, it's important to stretch that one Now, just in case people can't go into a lunge shall we just show them on a chair okay so you're sitting on the chair and you want to shuffle your body so it's on one side of the chair obviously take care you don't want your chair tipping over from there you're going to take your left leg Tricia um, to the back so tuck your toe to the, that's it, yes, there. Um, even a little bit further back if you can, there. So can you see how that position is exactly the same as a lunge position when you're standing up? It's just easier because all of your weight is supported on the chair. And then you can do the same thing in that position. So you keep your legs still and you just slightly tuck your bottom under. It's hard to show that movement on a camera because it is so small, but it's just a tuck under, little tuck under the bottom. If you want, you can take your left foot even further back along the floor, yeah, and then tuck under. Can you get that same sense of the stretch? Yeah. Yeah, good. So that would be your option if you don't feel able to um, do the, the lunge one that we've just shown because everything is, is supported and it's much easier. Good, perfect. Um, and I just want to do a front of the thigh stretch. So if you hold onto the wall and take a hold of your foot, that's it. Stand nice and tall, line up your knees, slightly tuck your bottom under and feel the front of the thigh. So where the last one was just that little bit where um, the hip meets the, the body, this should be more down the front of the thigh, running towards your knee. So it's the quadricep muscle that we're trying to stretch here. Can you feel that, Trisha? Yeah. When I first started exercising with you, this was impossible for me to do. In fact, mm. I found I, I couldn't reach my foot to get it up behind me. And then when I did get it up behind me, the agony was unbelievable. Mm. But it's so tight. And then if you swap to the other side, Now, if people find it hard to grab their foot, there's two things that I would suggest. One is to use a band or a scarf. So you can just put that around the front, around the front of your ankle, um, and then hold the ends of the band in your hand and get your foot up that way, because it is quite hard to get a hold of your foot if you're not used to it. You can also have a go lying on the floor on your tummy or on your side. So just find the position that is most comfortable for you. But this one is a really important stretch because we sit so often that that whole front gets really, really tight. And as I said, you want to be holding for about 30 seconds. So we've not done those on those two stretches, but take your time with it, breathe through it um, and think about sending the breath to the area that is stiff. I know it sounds a bit of a strange concept, but it, it will really help. And the more you practice your stretches, particularly that one, I find, the more 
the body will give in to you and it will let the muscle stretch. If it's not used to it, it will hang on and it will grip. Um, where if it, you know, if you relax into it and you practice and you take your time and you use your breath, then eventually it will give a little bit and you'll get that improved flexibility. I always do that stretch when I get up, uh, come off my exercise bike. Um, and and I, I reckon that my muscles are very, very warmed up with a, after half an hour of pedaling. And um, obviously I feel that it's useful. You've shown me how useful it is just to stretch out at the end of an exercise session. But um, by doing that movement and pulling my leg up behind me every practically every day, because I'm either working with you or I'm on my exercise bike, then uh, it just has made a huge amount of difference to how, to how much more flexible that, you know, that muscle has become. It's lengthened significantly, I would mm. say, because normally I sit down all the time. Mm. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, and as I say, it implicates, it's not just about the one muscle that you're stretching, but it's about what the tightness of that muscle is going to do to other areas. So it'll pull on other things and it will affect posture, um, alignment and potentially cause pain and, and injury. So it's definitely worth, worth the effort. Um, I would always recommend stretching the opposite muscle. So we've just done the front of the thigh. So the back of the thigh would be the hamstring. Um, and we've done these a lot at the end of videos before, um, but let's just refresh um, just quickly, Tricia, with a hamstring stretch. So if you soften through the knees. So where before we tucked our bottom under, with this one, we want to be sticking it up to the ceiling and even just that little bit of extra stick your bottom up to the ceiling will give you extra stretch down your hamstrings and can you do the other side but facing side onto the camera Trisha so you softening through that back leg front leg straight but not locked at the knee um, you only need to come forward as much as is right for you in order to get the stretch you don't need to reach right down for your leg to your leg you can support your weight uh, with your hands on your thighs if you want to and then just stick your bottom up to the ceiling Trish is quite flexible in her hamstring, so she can get down much further. Good, lovely. Okay, so we've done neck, we've done shoulders, we've done hip flexor, and we've done front of the thigh and back of the thigh. So I want to finish off with back stretches. So we'll need the mat out for this, please. Okay, so let's go on to our back stretches. So if you can bend your knees and put your feet flat on the floor, Tricia, I just want to get the back ready for what we're gonna do by mobilizing through the pelvis. So what I want you to do is just tuck your bottom under, Tricia, so similar movement to what we've just been doing. And as you tuck your bottom under, you might even get a stretch in your lower back if you're tight down there, and then just release it off by allowing the pelvis to go the other way. And when it goes the other way, you'll feel a gap between your back and the floor. So if you tilt and release, Trisha, please. So you're just tilting under. And as you tilt under, your back goes flat. And as I say, you might feel that little bit of a stretch. And then as you send it the other way, you'll feel the lower back come away from the floor slightly. A couple more of those. Tilt. So it's only small. And release. Tilt. And release. Perfect. So I'm gonna go on to a stretch. One of my favorite stretches actually, if you've got lower back pain. So you need to take one thigh in and hold it with your hands, please, Tricia. So it's coming in towards your chest, hold it behind. That's right, let the foot just relax and then extend that other leg straight out on the mat. Good, now just gently pull that thigh towards your chest, forward and back. Yeah, so it's a small movement, like a rocking kind of a movement forward and back. And depending on how tight you are and depending on which side you're tight, you will feel a stretch in your lower back on the side that you're working with. It's fine to allow your bottom to come slightly off the floor. In fact, we actively want that to happen because what we're trying to do is get some length down through the lower back area. Good, perfect. Put that one back down then, please. And let's have the other one. So take a hold behind the thigh. That's it. Forward 
and back and forward and back. So gentle rocking. Use your breath as always. That's it. So you, gen you generally breathe out as you're going into the stretch. So in this case, you'd be taking a breath here and then out breath to draw the knee towards the chest. Just one more like that. Perfect, good. So leave that one in and let's bring the other one in to meet it. Hold behind the thigh and then exactly the same thing. So we've done individual ones to warm it up a little bit. And now we're doing both together and you should feel that you get even more of a stretch through your lower back in the lumbar spine area. It's a very, very nice, very gentle way to ease out your lower back. How does that feel, Tricia? Yeah, it's really nice. Mm. And then you can go gently side to side with it. So they're not big movements, it's like you're massaging into your lower back. So you keep hugging it into your chest and then just a gentle move from side to side. So it's not like a, a complete twist over to the side. It's very small, very gentle, just easing into the lower back area. Good. Good, perfect. So you can play around with that for as long as you feel like you, you need to um, until you get that release into the lower back. Lovely. Let's move on then to the mid back. And we're going to warm up for this movement by letting the knees drop from one side to the other. So if you, that's it. So just nice and gentle, both shoulders stay on the floor. So we're moving just the lower body and the twists will come from the sort of mid back waist area. So you keep it nice and gentle to start off with. And then as the back loosens up, you can make the movement slightly bigger. And again, the breath is gonna help you. So it's in breath in the center and out breath to drop the knees over to the side. There we go. Good. So this mid back area, it's really common for it to be stiff. And if you think about it, we actually don't move around and rotate our body side to side in that way very often. So it stiffens up and it starts to cause pain. So it's definitely um, a key area I would say to work on for most people. So I'm gonna extend that mid back stretch. Um, only go into this one if you feel comfortable. And the way we're gonna do it, you're gonna put one leg straight out on the floor, Tricia. And you're going to put the sole of the other foot into the side of that leg. So around about the sort of knee area, that's it. Just bring your arms out a little bit wider with your palms on the floor. So they're there just to stabilize you. You're going to take a breath in. On the out breath, you're going to take your right knee over the top, leaving your left shoulder down. That's it. So you can see that we're getting a twist through that mid back area in the same way as we've just had a twist but it's more it's a bigger one it's, it's slightly more extended and again this should feel really nice into the mid back and then let's swap sides so take a breath in out breath that knee comes over this time the left shoulder stays down and I would hold it here and work with it and use the breath. So with each breath, you're just allowing everything to soften. You're thinking about softening the knee down towards the floor, but you're not forcing it down. This is not about you know strength and force. It's about easing things out gently, using your breath to help you. How does that feel, Tricia? Yeah, nice. Good, lovely. Come back to the center then. So that's, we've done the lumbar area, we've done the mid back area. I'm just gonna finish off with a cat stretch, which will cover the whole, the whole back. So if you want to come onto all fours, Tricia, please. Um, I just I want to mention, actually I saw Tricia with her uh, pillow there. Um, 
if you need a pillow to lie on because you're more comfortable that way you need to make sure that it's not too big a pillow because it can affect your neck alignment so it shouldn't be too too robust and too too hard um, so just just check when you're using cushions and pillows and things that they're not affecting your uh, neck alignment because it will it will stiffen up again and you just spent all that time easing it out good okay so uh, last exercise then is for the whole back but we're going to work through it sequentially and we're starting with the pelvis so you'll take a breath in as always um, out breath you start with the pelvis only and you tuck it under tuck 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 scoop the tummy and you keep tucking as much as you can before you move through into the mid back then the upper back and then eventually at the last moment the head drops so we're in as domed a position as we can be you take a breath in there and then this time we're going to work the other way so the head comes up first then you try and soften. So really focus on the areas one at a time. Soften the mid back, work through to the lower spine. That's it. And the pelvis comes up last. Good. Let's go again. Breathing in. Pelvis comes under. Scoop the tummy. Use the drawing up of the tummy. So really tuck under your bottom. Tuck it, tuck it, tuck it as much as you can. Lovely. Good. And come up into that nice big cat position then breath at the top head comes out first you're trying to soften then and that will take a lot of effort softening the upper back because it's not used to being in that slightly scooped position and then back through into the lower back and the pelvis good so one more go breathing in tuck your pelvis good high as you can and then head comes first and really focus on that upper back, soften, soften, soften between the shoulder blades, then the mid back and the pelvis. Beautiful. Good. OK, so how did that feel through the back? Uh, yes, all good. Um, yeah, my back now feels quite loose and stretched. Good. Um, so, as I said, we, we didn't do the full 30 seconds, but I, I would say if you're doing it on your own at home, take that time and you'll definitely see the benefit from taking the extra time. So we're just going to finish off then with a couple of side bends um, and a gentle rotation. So if you put one hand on the floor, Tricia, take a breath in and take the other one over the top into the side on the out breath. So think length out through your fingertips. Good. And then we do the same thing the other side. Most of what we've done today, certainly the early part of what we've done today, if you feel better being seated either on a chair or on the floor, you can do those exact same movements sitting down. So you don't have to, you don't have to be standing up the whole way through. And then Trisha, if you just rotate just to ease off through the back. So rotate one way and then the other. And similarly, when you're sitting on the floor here, you don't have to sit with the legs out like Trisha. You can sit with them cross-legged or however you're most comfortable. Good. Perfect. Lovely. There you are. So that was a stretch focusing not on every single joint, but on the areas that are generally most troublesome and the areas that people spoke about when we did our initial session. So I hope that was useful and I hope you feel better, Tricia, for having done, done the session. Yes, absolutely. I mean, sometimes we do these stretching sessions. We often do them on a Thursday. And, um, you know, Lindsay will come and she'll say, you know, we're just going to do some lovely, gentle stretching. <laughs> and I think, oh, good. You know, that sounds really, uh, really easy. But actually, because I'm quite tight in various bits of my body, um, I really feel... Uh, a, I feel the need of need for it, but also when we're finished, I do feel that uh, we've had a proper workout. So, uh, yes, it is. It can be quite gentle, but it's incredibly helpful because without this stretching, um, the thing is that if I keep doing these stretches, that's what I feel. If I just keep doing them, then I can maintain and perhaps slightly increase the flexibility that I've got. And I can feel just how desperately important it is really for my mo general mobility and the ease with which I live my life, which is what I'm doing these exercises for, really. 
Good, perfect. So thank you very much indeed again, Lindsay, and um, we'll look forward to seeing all of you next week. Um, have you got any thoughts about what we're doing next week yet, Lindsay? Um, there was quite a lot of um, interest in rounded shoulders and um, upper back. And so I think that is probably a session in itself next week as well, which will involve um, some stretching, but also some strengthening. So it's quite a nice combination of, of some of the things that we've done so far. Getting rid of the dreaded dowager's hump, mm -hmm. preventing it forming in the first place. That sounds fantastic. Thank you very much indeed, Lindsay, and thanks all of you for watching. And uh, I do hope you continue to join us and continue to enjoy the exercises that we're doing with you. So bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye and thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.